One, two, three, four. One, two. Let me tell you how it will be. All these things that government can do to fix the economy, fix schools, <coughs> uh, fix health care, for instance. Um, but I think that begs the question of whether or not the federal government should be doing any of that. And I'm just, my question is twofold. Um, do you stand by your oath of office to protect uh, defend the Constitution of the United States? I certainly do. Okay, um, great. I appreciate that. And second, where in the Constitution does it give you the authority, does it give Congress the authority to do something, for instance, like the health care bill, where it forces people to get health care that they might not want? Could you, could you show me where it's enumerated in the Constitution? I know. It's one of those questions that, that people ask a lot. When I look at and know from my own personal self yes. uh, that we have passed Medicare, we have decided to have Social Security, we have decided that the government has an opportunity to partner with taxpayers to make certain that people in their later years are not hurt because you know, they have no revenue coming in. It's not a partnership, you know, what, you're forced. Like. Okay. So I think that the government does take some steps. We see in the Gulf now. Well, I mean, obviously, people you know, were outraged because the government didn't step in um, immediately. To do I think that. The government so we do have an obligation. When I can health care, the government authorized the exemption to let them drill. You're lying again. Obama approved it. Obama approved it. Come on. Pharmaceutical company stocks went up. There are many, many people who have been hurt by the health care industry today. And I meet them every single day. And I believe that we did have an opportunity to try and change that for children, for families, for people, so that they don't have to suffer when an insurance company decides that they're going to just drop their insurance. Now, in order to do that, we had to do some other things as well. And you can't just have people getting insurance at the last minute and not having any way of bringing people into the system. New York has tried that, and it's very expensive more expensive than in California. And so if we can do that as a country better, have larger pools of people who have some pre-existing conditions, children dealing with diabetes better, that will make a difference. I had a chance to meet with um, one of the CEOs of IBM the other day, and, um, and also Mark McClellan, who used to work uh, in the Bush administration. And they actually have seen some major changes going on. Not specifically for people tomorrow, but that a lot of health agencies have started having the kinds of conversations and the plans that would really do away with all the duplication that we see hospitals that had incentives to re, you know, uh, readmit people um, when, they, when they got sick. Uh, that's wrong. And so we have to look to those agencies that have done some of this, and people are starting to talk about this in a whole different way. So I, I can't tell you that everything's going to change, you know, as soon as the, the legislation begins to, to be implemented specifically. Mm -hmm. But we know today, we know that there are a lot of people who have kids on their insurance that are going to be able to stay on their insurance. We know there are people with pre-existing conditions uh, that are feeling that you yeah. know there may be something there for them. I so. understand there's a lot of good intention behind it, but where in the Constitution does it allow you to you know, authorize you, you to do that? It doesn't. She knows it. I think you it do, doesn't? You do look to the common welfare. It does make a difference that the, people have insurance. And so we're uh, yeah. I, I think so that if it, it can basically be. Consumption is a Medicare. Medicare was one of those areas that we chose to. To go against the Constitution? Yeah, I'm the tax man.